what are the true costs of bridging finance? Hey, my name is Alistair Cunningham. Welcome to this week's episode. Do the usual, click notifications and turn on subscriptions. That way you'll never miss an upload. So, I'm gonna to talk to you today about the true costs of bridging finance. I am giving you my advice from my experience because I've done this three times now and I'm doing it again as we speak. I am due to complete on a property in two days time using bridging finance. So I've got four, I'll have four experiences of using bridging finance and I'm gonna to talk to you about that today and the, I'm gonna run you through the exact costings on one of them deals. So, as I'm just gonna briefly explain why I'm talking about bridging finance. I've been doing a lot of uh, videos recently about buy, refurbish, refinance. It is by far my favorite strategy. This is the strategy where you buy a house, you add value to it in the way of doing a refurb, you then have an exit. You can either refinance it or you can flip it and sell it. And then you can take the profit, take the rental income, etc., etc. Great way to build portfolios. It's also a great way to recycle your cash. Three ways to do this that I am aware of, and now there is probably more, but there's three ways that I've done and I've practiced, so I'm only gonna talk about what I've done. Number one, you can buy in cash. The full purchase price of a buy, refurbish, refinance in cash. I'd done that in a property in Liverpool for 43,000 pound, plus auction fees of 6,000 pound. So 50,000 pound all in, and then I refinanced it to 110,000, okay? That's option one. Option number two is to find a joint venture partner. Somebody who's going to invest in that deal and loan you the money for a return. Now obviously you've got FCA sophisticated investor rules to comply with if, you're, if it falls under that category. But there's, like, do you know what I mean? You can get a partner to come on board and you both take equity, you both have a share in it, you can set a company up. There's many ways to do it. So there is a way for you to do it if you're looking to do it. Now that typically is not gonna be free. You're gonna have to give a percentage return or you're gonna have to give some of the deal away to that investor. But ultimately, if they're putting the cash in and you're putting the, what are you putting into it? Experience, uh, the fact that you found the deal, you're gonna manage the deal and some of your cash, I don't know, you have, to, you have to agree what the joint venture agreement is, you're both happy with it, heads of terms, contract, legally drafted, boom shaka, happy days. That's option two. Option number three is bridging finance. I actually really like bridging finance, but understand this, if you don't use it correctly, you'll lose money. Go and get the correct advice from a whole of market mortgage broker. I'll put the name of one in the description. Go and speak to them. Now, as I say, don't even take it from me. I'm All I'm doing in this video is I'm gonna run you through the numbers on a deal that I am doing this minute. Now, you're gonna have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of, lots and lots and lots of charges, costs. Because at the end of the day, a bridge, a finance is a bridge, okay? It's a bridge in finance from getting you from A to B. But it's a short term, high interest loan, okay? Now, this is not a long term thing. Typically, a bridge will be three months to 12 months, okay? And if you go outside of that term, oh my God, the costs go up, okay? So, make sure you understand the full legalities of this when you're getting involved in it. And understand, it's not regulated by the normal, the normal governing bodies. It is completely unregulated sector. So, the costs involved. I am doing a bridge at the minute and I'm buying a house for 210,000 pounds. So that is what the bridging company are going to advance to me, to my solicitors, on the day or the couple of days before completion, and then on their completion, that is there to add towards the completion statement. I've got to transfer the balance, which is, I've got to make this up to 212,025. So I've got to add about 212, about 112,000 pounds. Okay, so I'm doing that from my own investment, my own cash. Now, what sort of the fees that you're now involved in this? So this is how much I'm borrowing, this is how much they're actually transferring to me. So the first thing you've got, or the first thing I've got, is what's called a facility fee. And this is essentially just a fee for the fact that they're facilitating the loan for you. So a facility fee for them lending me the money, 3,211 pounds, 74 pence. That's what they're gonna charge me. Next. We have, huh, that's a good one, interest. So as you can see, it's not cheap, okay? That's pretty much a thousand pounds a month, right? It's not cheap. The interest rate is 0.89% in 
term. If I, as long as I'm in term, so my term for this loan is 12 months. As long as I'm inside my term, the interest rate is not 0.89%. So over 12 months, the interest goes up to 2%. So it pretty much, it pretty much doubles, okay? So it goes up to 2%. So what does that tell you? That tells you to make sure you complete on time and don't run over term, okay? It's crucial. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Hope you've seen that, written that down, whatever. I'll come back to it in a minute. So they're not just happy with a facility fee of £3,211. They also want to charge you an admin fee. And that is £550. Uh, next, uh, we have, so we have a chaps fee, £35. So even the fact that they're going to transfer the money to us, £35. So that's fine. Okay, fair enough. So not only are they content with charging us a £3,200 uh, facility fee, plus... £550 admin fee, plus charging us £35 to transfer us the money, they then want us to pay for the insurance. So we have to pay the insurance, and that's £559. So we have to pay for that as well, £559 in the insurance to make sure it's insured. And, oh, not forgetting, not forgetting, this is a biggie. Make sure you factor this in, because if you don't factor this in, you get, you get burnt. Because the first time I'd done a bridge, I wasn't made aware of this, and I got, a, I got burnt, okay? You have to pay the legal costs, and that, for this loan, is £1,800. So it's, it was £1,500 plus that, £1,800. Next, your solicitor costs. Yeah, so if you're about, like, my solicitor charges for this property, for the handling the sale of the property, is £750 plus that. But because I'm using bridging finance, and it's got to be verified by two solicitors because they can't both advise on the first charge and the debenture. Oh, I've got to pay additional solicitor costs. So the solicitor costs on top of the £900 that I've already been quoted. So I'm actually paying nearly £1,500 to buy this from solicitor costs, okay? So as you can see, there, there is a lot of additional costs that you may not factor in. Now there's one other cost that you need to factor in as well. So they have an exit charge, which is... 350 pounds. Like, uh, it's funny, isn't it? Look, they charge us, we have to pay for, 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 for them to transfer the money to us, it's 35 pounds. But when we want to transfer it back, we also have to pay 350. So like, listen guys, it, it, just be aware of this, okay? Whenever you're doing anything on bridging, now this is for this amount of money, okay? £100,148.66. £100, now, I'm sure if I shopped around, I maybe have saved a little bit of money there and a little bit of money there and a little bit of money there. I'm sure I maybe did. But I had to make a decision, had to do it quickly, because I needed to get this done, because the deal had to be secure. And I didn't have time to faff around. And this was all organised during the lockdown situation, so I am paying a slightly higher interest rate, which I'm fine with, because there's so much cushion and profit in the property, I don't mind paying a little bit more money. Now, bear in mind this, the interest, I only, I've only got a minimum term of three months on the loan. So after three months, I can pay it back and I only pay three months interest. So if I decide to pay the loan back within six months, which in theory I could do, because I could refinance another property and do that, then I might only pay half that. So I might only pay 6,000 pound in interest. So this is, this is, this is nego not negotiable, but this is, this is on a scale. So it's per month, okay? But they work everything out in 12 months. So all these figures are for full 12 month term. I plan to, do it a lot quicker, but obviously property, you know, it does run over now and again. So as you can see, bridging is quite expensive. All I'll say, speak to a proper mortgage broker, get proper advice, what suits you, what suits the property you're buying, and suits your financial situation. Next, make sure you know your numbers. This is the numbers that I'm working on at the minute for the deal I'm doing in Bedford. Now, the total amount of, the total amount the total costs, if I run it to the full 12 months, the full 12 months of the loan, it's going to cost me £19,750 additional just to borrow the money on bridge. So you've got to be super, super clear on the numbers. Make sure you know your numbers. Okay, as you can see, numbers are super crucial. I'm sure you'd agree property is all about numbers and it's about people. So find the right people. Know your numbers, do the deals, make some money, happy days. Guys, make sure you get proper advice from a proper, legally qualified mortgage broker who does whole of market, specializes in bridging, and 
will do a good deal for you. You're going to have to pay for that as well, okay? Guys, hope you found that useful. Catch you next week. Get subscribed. Turn notifications on. See you next time.